Many people tend to see the Geometry Dash community as a group of people playing a cube game while rambling on about inside jokes like Devil Vortex Saws, Congregation Jump Scares, or other topics that have no meaning to the outside observer. However, despite the seemingly simple nature of the GD community, closer scrutiny reveals that it is actually a system of complex interactions and factors that all come together to create the community that we know and love today. However, in order to uncover the true complexity of our community, we have to use a certain special weapon, the field of anthropology. Now, you may be wondering, what in the name of Robtop is anthropology, and what the heck does it have to do with Geometry Dash? Oxford Dictionary defines anthropology as the study of human societies and cultures in their development, but for our purposes, that's pretty complicated. Effectively, for us, anthropology will consider how people in the GD community interact, and the systems that these interactions create. So now that we have a better understanding of what anthropology is, we can apply anthropological principles to our investigation of the Geometry Dash community. Let's begin by taking a look at the basics of the Geometry Dash community. As does any other group or community of people, the GD community has a set of rules and expectations that govern how GD players act in interactions with each other. These rules, which are not necessarily explicitly acknowledged often, are what French sociologist Emile Durkheim would call social facts. Within Geometry Dash, no one tells the player to give feedback on another player's level, leave a comment with their attempt count, or avoid making blind gameplay, but societal, or in this case community expectation in the form of social facts, makes such actions normal. When a player takes these actions, other players are influenced to do the same, thus repeating the cycle and building these social facts, or expected actions or behaviors for community members. These GD social facts can serve as a force for good within our community. Players giving productive and kind feedback, or leaving their positive thoughts about someone else's work, can make people better able to remain as happy and supported members of the community, making it a better place for everyone. But GD social fact, or rather, the lack thereof, can also be damaging to the community. Being an online community, Geometry Dash is less bound by conventional social facts of in-person interactions. In other words, because they are behind the shield of a screen, people can feel that they aren't obligated to be polite, nice, or welcoming to others, and may act rudely towards others as a result. Unprovoked and invalid criticism, homophobia, and other aggressive actions are unfortunately more common than they should be, which stains the Geometry Dash community for all of us, not just those who commit the acts themselves. The lack of social expectations about the internet in comparison to real-life interaction is an issue, not only with the Geometry Dash community, but with other online communities as well. This brings us to another concept, first introduced by a man named Johann Galton, the concept of structural violence. Structural violence is essentially the subjection of a certain group or person to some sort of harm or discomfort by the system or community which they are interacting with. While structural violence in an online video game may not seem to have much in common, I have personally observed structural violence within the GD community, specifically against those who are new to the game. Mistreatment of new players by the veteran community members not only harms those who are trying to get into the game, but also gives a poor image of the community as a whole. One of my favorite YouTubers, a Mario Maker streamer named DGR Dave, described in a recent stream how his first impressions of the community made him unlikely to play the game again. It was the first time I'd ever played it, and people were really really rude and mean when I was playing it, because I wasn't as good at the game as they thought I should be. Hearing this from someone who I see as one of my own personal YouTube idols is very upsetting to me, as I know that this isn't what Dave deserves, or a rep representation of what our community truly is. But unfortunately, he fell victim to GD's structural violence against new players, and as a result, he probably will not play the game again. However, despite what I have been saying about the community, the GD community is not just full of jerks or uninviting members. In fact, the concept of thick description, first conceived by the anthropologist Clifford Geertz, perfectly sums this up. Thick description essentially says that nothing is ever surface level in anthropology, and often there is deeper meaning or context, more to see than what one can view at first glance. By looking more closely at the Geometry Dash community, we can see that these mentioned flaws do not define the community. Whether something as simple as complementing the work of other players, 
or something like the community's tribute to the GD legend Michigan, I've seen more awesome people in the GD community than I can count. The community has created works of art, ousted members who have harmed others, and work to preserve the game's history. In short, as in Geertz's thick description, one must look further than the surface level of the GD community to find the group of people that I am proud to be a part of. With the help of anthropology, and by making decisions that have a positive impact on others, we can create the welcoming community we want Geometry Dash to be.